Hello everyone, the video today is about biofilm disruptors, which ones are the best, and how long does it take to get rid of biofilms that are created by Candida. Uh, just before jumping into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick second to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks in advance for taking a second to do that. And also, as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only, and if you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. So there were a couple of questions. That I'm going to tie into one video here. Um, so I posted a video about a week ago about um, biofilms, something about that. I post about biofilms all the time because it's a popular topic and I think an interesting and important topic. And so the question was, um, what would be the best way to get rid of candida biofilms and how long would a person have to take um, DMSA, which is a chelating agent that helps to break up phase two biofilms, um, to break those biofilms? Um, the other question was um, something to the effect of what are the best phase two biofilm disruptors? So uh, thank you for those questions. Um, I've talked about the ideal uh, or the, the best, the most potent phase two biofilm disruptors in other videos. I may have a video completely dedicated to that. I don't really remember. I've created a lot of videos, um, but uh, just to quickly run through that. Um, so the best, like the strongest phase two biofilm disruptors, um, to my understanding, um, include any uh, or the, the most common, I should say, chelating agents uh, that would include D. MPS, DMSA, and EDTA. So those are very good phase two biofilm disruptors. Um, silver is also a biofilm disruptor. So there are different silver products. Um, ideally, one would work with a silver hydrosol. Um, colloidal silver probably works as well. Um, <clears throat> And then there's also something called a bismuth alpha lipoic acid diphyol complex, where the you know, supplement company or compounding pharmacy takes an alpha lipoic acid molecule, takes a bismuth molecule, combines them, and they create this special diphyol complex, and they're uh, very good at breaking down biofilms. Um, so to my understanding, those are the strongest biofilm disruptors, um, <clears throat> and they break down these phase two biofilms, which are kind of the most like kind of um, uh, tough, sticky, tenacious biofilms. Um, phase one biofilm disruptors, on the other hand, which would include things like proteolytic enzymes, which would include things like natokinase, um, seropeptidase, uh, lumbar kinase. You know, those are phase one biofilm disruptors, so they can break down kind of the easier to break down biofilms, kind of the, the weaker or flimsier biofilms. Um, NAC, some people call it a phase two biofilm disruptor. Um, I feel that clinically um, it seems to work more as a phase one biofilm disruptor and that it doesn't pack nearly as much punch as the phase two biofilm disruptors I mentioned earlier. Um, and then also any aromatic compounds, so um, essential oils or anything that has kind of like a pungent um, nature to it. So like, you know, spices, for example, like cloves or uh, cinnamon or um, oregano or thyme, those types of things would all be um, phase one biofilm disruptors. Um, so that is the, the list to my understanding of the best phase two biofilm disruptors. Um, <clears throat> Black cumin seed, actually, just to, uh, to mention that um, there is a product out there. It's called, oh shoot, um, I don't really, I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's something like phase two biofilm something or tother. I don't remember the company that makes it. I never prescribe it. Um, it's, it's a fine product. Um, just I, am, I get my biofilm disruptors uh, prescribed from, uh, created by a compounding pharmacy and just prescribe that for patients because um, we can then put the chelating agent in there, typically being DMSA. Um, <clears throat> shoot, what's called phase two advance or something. Shoot, I can't remember what it's called now. Anyways, um, it has um, the diphyl complex, that bismuth alpha lipoic acid diphyl complex, and it has black cumin seed in it. Um, I am not, I haven't seen any research literature um, indicating that uh, black cumin seed is a phase two biofilm disruptor. Um, I'm not saying that literature doesn't exist. I just haven't seen it. Um, but my understanding is the uh, one of the doctors out there who's the you know, most um, uh, prolific in terms of talking about biofilms, um, especially um, the differentiation between phase one and phase two biofilms. Um, and he, you know, lectures about this at medical conferences. I think he's a, a consummate authority on the subject, in my opinion. Um, his name's Dr. Paul Anderson, a brilliant a naturopathic doctor from Washington State. Um, and so he, to my understanding, was involved in formulating these products. Um, and so there must be some good reason why that black human is in there. Um, so that's just another one to, to maybe have on the, the maybe list, shall we say, for phase two biofilm disruption. With that being said, as I said in a, in a previous video and kind of alluded to it today, um, you know, with NAC, 
um, I find that when patients go on NAC, it's very rare, like I've, I've never had a patient, I don't think, where I felt like, oh, they're on this NAC and I think we're breaking down phase two biofilms. Similarly, when I prescribe black cumin seed for various purposes, I haven't had any cases where I think, oh, I think we're breaking down phase two biofilms. Now, patients who go on silver, who go on the chelating agents to say bind up heavy metals or something like that, where we don't think we're going after um, biofilms, um, I've absolutely seen patients who have flared notably from uh, going on those agents. And I, and I think in hindsight, like, oh, I think we're actually breaking down biofilms inadvertently just based on the nature of their symptoms. So anyways, um, if there's interest in me dig, uh, fleshing out what, I, what I've seen clinically to make me come to that conclusion, happy to post another video about that, but I can go on tangents all day. So I'll get back to the questions at hand. So went over the phase two, <clears throat> I've gone over the phase two biofilm disruptors that are the best in, to my understanding. And then the other question was around how long would a person need to be on, um, uh, let's see here, a DMSA to break down biofilms. So, and then what's the best way to get rid of candida biofilms. So to my understanding, um, it doesn't really matter what type of microbe is creating the biofilm, whether it's being created by the Lyme bacteria, uh, whether it's being created by candida, whether it's being created by mold, whether it's being created by SIBO bacteria. Um, to my understanding, um, you know, the, the biofilm disrupting agents don't differ depending on the type of uh, microbe that's actually creating the biofilm. Um, the, the location, of course, is going to differ uh, depending on what we're talking about, whether it's, you know, mold in the sinuses, SIBO in the small intestine, uh, candida biofilm in the vaginal canal, like, you know, those would all require different um, routes of administration, you know, nasal spray, swallowing pills, maybe a suppository. Um, but <clears throat> um, generally speaking, um, using these phase two biofilm disruptors would be the best way to get rid of an, any biofilm, um, in my opinion. Um, including candida created biofilms. Um, in terms of how long it would take to bring down the biofilms, that really depends on how long the infection has been there for, how tenacious the um, biofilm is that's already built up in there. Um, and then also uh, would depend on the efficacy of the rate of administration that's being used. So if a person say had uh, you know, intestinal biofilms, but they were for some reason using like a nasal spray, like that, that probably wouldn't work very well. Um, or if they had nasal biofilms and they were using uh, an oral um, uh, a biofilm disruptor, you know, it's going to take a lot longer for that to work. Um, but assuming that the uh, most direct form, uh, the most direct application of the biofilm disruptor is being used, um, and that it's a nice, robust, you know, uh, properly dose, like high enough dosage uh, biofilm disruptor, then the general range would be somewhere usually between like two to six months. Um, there might be some cases where it would be longer than that. It'd be pretty rare, I think, to get rid of biofilms in less than two months. And yeah, six months would be not an, uh, an uncommon amount of time. Um, and, and I'm talking about like you know, fully, fully getting rid of them as best we can tell clinically. As I mentioned in other videos, one of the big challenges is that we don't have a commercially available test to tell us whether or not a biofilm is there in the first place. And then therefore, if we don't have a test to tell us whether they're gone or not, it's something that we have to um, determine based on clinical uh, presentation. I've certainly posted videos about that before, so I won't get into that now. Uh, if you're interested in that topic, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, if you're not already watching this on YouTube, um, just, you know, keyword search biofilms. I've posted a bunch of videos about those and I'm sure there's one that's entitled something like how long do you need to treat biofilms for or something like that. So um, anyways, I'll, I'll leave it there for now. I hope that answered the questions. Thanks again for submitting those questions. Um, I always appreciate when folks submit the questions because it gives me a really good sense of what to talk about. Um, I could talk about things all day, but it's really nice to talk about things that um, at least uh, one person out there wants to hear about um, when they ask the question. Um, so uh, uh, thank you for submitting questions. Please continue to do so. Uh, just post in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer as soon as I can, and I will leave it there for now.